Hey everybody, Sean from Media Assault here, and it's time for episode number two of Schlock Cinema. And as promised, I will be reviewing Ape from 1976. This is the front of the DVD. And as you can see, it bears just a passing resemblance to King Kong's artwork. There's the back, and you can see the evidence of the shoddy gorilla suit that is one of the main schlocky features in this really awful film. <laughs> uh, this movie was released in October of 1976. It was meant to capitalize on the hype surrounding the upcoming, at that point, uh, remake of King Kong, which was scheduled to come out and did come out in December of 1976. In fact, this movie was actually called The Next King Kong, or The New King Kong, and King Kong Returns in some markets. Uh, it stars Rod Arantz and Joanna Deverona. Uh, Mr. Arantz, if I'm pronouncing his name correctly, became a somewhat famous soap opera star at some point. I be believe later on in his career he actually did appear in some episodes, or at least one episode of Star Trek The Next Generation as well. And Joanna Deverona is also known as Joanna Kearns, and she went on to fame in the sitcom Growing Pains. Uh, she probably doesn't want to have anything to do with this film anymore in her career. Uh, this movie was shot in 3D. It was presented theatrically in 3D. In fact, I went to see this film when I was eight years old, and I only saw about the first half hour of it because the film broke, and uh, I believe I went with my mom and... <laughs> We demanded our money back after 30 minutes, um, and I'm really glad we did, because sitting through this movie is a painful experience. It is so bad that I even hesitate to recommend it as a so bad it's good movie. It's that bad. It's a movie that makes those sci-fi original films from Saturday nights like... Um, what a, a Dino Croc versus Super Gator and all that kind of stuff makes those look pretty much like masterpieces. Even though there's no CGI in this film, it's all practical effects, uh, they're horrible, to say the least. First of all, there's the ape suit, which you can't really see too well here, but I'll put a picture up, and you can kind of take a look at this masterpiece. Uh, it is as moth-eaten and threadbare as a dime store ape suit could possibly look and the the camera does not attempt at all or the filmmakers did make made no attempt to hide the fact that this is a guy in a suit in fact there are several instances where you can see the holes in the suit you can see the t-shirt that the guy underneath is wearing uh, in one scene you can see the tennis shoes that the guy who was wearing the suit is wearing as he stomps on a mountain village. There are numerous scenes where it is blatantly obvious that this is nothing more than a guy in a suit smashing models. Nothing in this movie ever looks real. Ever. Uh, the story is an obvious ripoff of King Kong, but in King Kong you at least learned where the ape came from, uh, the origin of the ape, whether there was a legend of the ape or whatever. Here, the movie starts, the ape's already been captured. You learn that he's 36 feet tall, and he's been gassed. Uh, so he's been knocked out for what is supposed to be a couple of days. There's an explosion, and the ship that he's on has sunk, and the ape is free. He then goes to wrestle a shark. In what was supposed to be sort of a nod to Jaws, uh, you know, you've got King Kong fighting Jaws. It's a, which that may sound great in theory, but here it's been reduced to a man in a really shitty ape suit wrestling a dead shark. Uh, he's basically taking the body of a dead shark and it looks like he's washing it or rinsing it or something. He just moves it back and forth and then in what is apparently an ode to the jaw-ripping scene from King Kong, he tears the shark's jaws apart. I feel very bad that a shark had to die for this film. <laughs> um, 
after that, it's just an endless series of the ape smashing model buildings, and then there's a ridiculous subplot involving a blonde actress played by the aforementioned Joanna Verona, De Verona, uh, and she manages to attract the attention of the ape, and then the ape attempts twice to pick her up and carry her around, and in those scenes she's portrayed by a really bad Barbie doll. Uh, there are just so many scenes in this movie that make it eligible for my schlock cinema. Uh, well, the whole film is complete schlock. It's just, it's absolutely terrible. From the scene where he wrestles the dead shark to the scene where he throws a snake at the camera, knocking the camera over in the process. And it's not an animatronic snake. It's not a snake puppet. It's an actual snake. Uh, apparently the ape changes in size throughout this entire movie. He's supposed to be 36 feet tall. There's a scene where he fights this snake, which apparently would be, you know, what's the longest snake in the world? 18 feet long, maybe. Uh, which here looks like it's about a foot long compared to the ape, so that would make the ape, I don't know, 600 feet high? I have no idea. It's just... Uh, there's no scale to this film at all. Even if there was any consistency to the size of the ape, it wouldn't improve the film anymore, so that's actually nitpicking. Uh, you've got sounds, sound effects in this film where the ape is smashing buildings. It sounds like somebody's crinkling a paper bag. That would be bad if it was done once, but every single time a building crumbles at the hands of this ape, somebody's crumpling a paper bag. Actually, I think they did it once, and they just repeated the sound over and over again. Um, there's a scene where the ape uh, is apparently feeling some sort of rapturous joy as a model of a hang glider is strung over his head as he's clapping to the score and dancing like, um, I don't know, he's hearing some voices or some music in his head. Uh, he, he does look really happy. Um, there's numerous scenes of a demented, or seemingly demented, American colonel who talks on a telephone for 90% of the movie and swears a lot and says what I believe are supposed to be funny one-liners. He just sounds like somebody who's had a few too many drinks and decided to ad-lib a whole bunch of irate dialogue. And speaking of dialogue, most of the dialogue in this film is terrible. And that's when you can understand it. The English actors, or the English-speaking actors, I should say, deliver their lines in a flat, monotone way. Uh, the non-native speaking English, non-English native speaking, you know what I mean, they don't speak English as their native language. Uh, they deliver their lines maybe with more gusto, but you can't understand them, uh, so it really makes no difference. There are numerous attempts to capitalize on the 3D in this film, so there are a lot of completely inexplicable accidents where things poke at the camera. One army uh, driver drives a jeep into a log which pierces the windshield, merely for your entertainment. There seems to be no other reason why this happens. Uh, kids on a swing set swing their legs into the camera. Dozens, it seems, of soldiers uh, fire their weapons directly into the camera. A man with a set of garden shears attacks the camera. The ape himself throws boulders in an arcing fashion, uh, belying the string that is holding the boulders up. Uh, he throws rocks at the camera. There are numerous instances of poor model work. Hell, this, this movie is just an atrocity from the beginning to end. But my favorite scene, well, there are two of my favorite scenes. The one where the ape flips off the camera after destroying a helicopter. And in the death throes, I'm not spoiling anything here, the ape dies at the end, just like in King Kong. Uh, except he doesn't climb a building. That's about the only thing he doesn't do in, <laughs> in this film uh, that King Kong does in any of his uh, movie outings. Um, but here in the death scene, the ape barfs blood. Um, a copious quantity of blood. <laughs> uh, 
I, I really, uh, there, there is little to recommend about this movie other than if you could get your friends together, get hideously drunk, and then watch this, it may be a good time. Um, otherwise, there's no reason to recommend this other than to say this is possibly the worst movie I've ever seen. Um, it makes Plan 9 from Outer Space look like a masterpiece. It makes the sci-fi original films look like masterpieces. It's it's terrible, and you have to see it. And guess what? You can watch it for free on YouTube, and that's probably the only way I would recommend you watching it. Don't spend any money on this movie at all. <laughs> so get yourself a large amount of alcohol, crowd around your computer or your YouTube-equipped uh, device hooked up to your TV, and watch Ape from 1976 in all of its terrible glory um, and come back here and comment and let me know what you thought of it I won't put the link below because you know it's not really that hard to find but <laughs> I really can't recommend this movie at all I would give this a 0.5 out of 10 and uh, really it's that bad so there you go that's my review of Ape episode number two of Schlock Cinema this is a movie so bad, I can't recommend it, even as a so bad, it's good uh, movie. So drink and enjoy. <laughs> Stick around here on the Media Assault channel for more movie reviews and other stuff coming up. As always, feel free to rate, comment, and if you haven't done so already, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.